So we've got the Asus Vivo Tab Note 8 here with the Wacom digitizer here. I've made a little measuring stick. What I'm going to do is bring the um, digitizer stylus down from the 30mm mark, tell you when it registers. Uh, you should be able to see that on the video. And also tell you when it deregisters, because I think it's uh, there's a little bit of a hysteresis loop on, on that. So we start at 30 going down, and um, we're at 20, and that's registered. So it looks about 19 millimeters and deregistered at about 20. 19, 20. Registered, unregistered. And bring that pen away a bit. Registered, unregistered, and un registered, unregistered, registered. Okay, so we're, we're well registered at uh, 18 millimeters. Um, so there's a whole load of um, space there in order for palm rejection to work. And that's the main reason you want the registration high as possible above the digitizer layer. So let's try a bit of palm rejection here. I'm just gonna go straight down. Okay, I'm gonna bring the pen up. And the pen has to come up. In fact, you don't get any registration on the upstroke. Uh, you have to be a long way away with the pen for the finger to register, obviously it registered to move the screen there. Um, this is one note, so obviously the pen will give you um, pen features, the finger gives you fin finger features, it knows what's coming down, you get different contextual um, effects. So it's pretty easy uh, to be doing, um, you know, to be working on this and have palm rejection on one note, because obviously the palm doesn't register any, any um, uh, digitizer activity or any, uh, it doesn't trigger any painting activity, there's really no problem, absolutely brilliant palm rejection to be honest. That would apply to palm rejection when, when writing as well, so actually in this case the finger can register um, text here, um, so what you, you can, if you're really not careful, if you're really not careful, it's quite difficult, is actually have the fingers. But look how high the pen is. The pen only has to come down to that level there, and and we're already rejecting the palm. And uh, I'm not a right-handed writer, so this is really not going to work. But the only uh, thing I want to do here is <laughs> actually recognise it. That's incredible. I don't write with the right hand. Let me just write with the the left hand. I'm a terrible, terrible handwriter. It's one of the reasons I don't do it. But um, and I'm going to move the camera just there so you can see me coming in a bit. I'm going to put my palm there. And um, that really works very well. Yeah, so that is excellent. The palm rejection on there is, is fantastic. Okay, well, fresh paint will uh, register the pressure on the uh, pen, but I'm not sure how many levels it will register. So I've got a crayon here, I'm just lightly going to go over there, you can see a very light effect, press a little harder and you get a bigger effect, and then it doesn't take much actually to get the full pressure, beyond that there's nothing, it's a very very um, slight difference between full and light. I don't know if that's good enough for, for artists, although it, is, it's, it does feel quite natural. Um, I would say a little bit more pressure required for the for the high pressure register, but uh, it does prove anyway that there's um, some l pressure level detection in fresh paint. Now, the other app uh, I think is quite good is uh, if we take Reader. Um, Reader has actually I think it's even undocumented. Um, you can obviously select, I think it depends on the, depends on the document actually, yes you can select stuff and then apply a, a highlight if you wanted to, to, to apply a highlight to that. What you can also do is actually, ah, if the PDF allows it, so if the features of the PDF allow that, does this one allow you? No, it doesn't, uh, this one doesn't allow you. So let me... Let me get another PDF here. So here's one here, uh, here's a PDF. I'm obviously in landscape, it would be better in uh, portrait, but just to show you that you can actually 
annotate on this one and um, that applies to the PDF and saves on top of the PDF so there's a really nice um, palm rejection that can be used and um, I really like that of course you can select text as well and do highlighting and you use your finger for that for example like that and then you can put um, obviously you can write over stuff here or you can actually put notes on text with your finger as well oops let's just try this um, oh there we go add a note now obviously I can write uh, <laughs> I can write um, it bloody worked as well my terrible handwriting so you can write in there if you want to or of course you can use standard uh, keyboard as well so that's the built-in reader app let's just close that Ring Reader up again and uh, reopen that file. And there it is with all the uh, annotations. I'm going to reopen the file from scratch. Browse recent uh, documents. See if the sa savings. Yeah, the the sa the uh, the uh, annotations are saved with the original PDF. It looks like. Uh, Hover has a nice effect uh, in Internet Explorer. Of course, there are menu items in web pages that you very rarely can get to easily. Uh, and I'm already messing it up with my finger there. But of course, with your pen, let's wait for that page to load. You've got uh, the ability to select and go down into submenus in Hover menus, which is really nice. You've also got... Um, can you see on there the button? There's the button there. That's pretty difficult to to know where it is, to be honest. But that button is an instant right click. So let's just get you back into some text here. We'll select some text and we'll just right click on it. Whoops. Right click, go down. And then, of course, you get the options there. And uh, I can uh, obviously just paste that there. So uh, that's a nice feature. I think it's pretty difficult to get this right button working well, um, but definitely the hover on the menus there is uh, is really good. I really like that. I think I need some calibration on this. I'm a left-handed user, obviously, so uh, it's probably been cal calibrated for a right-hand user. One little thing to note on on the uh, the Metro UI is that put your pen on the screen and it moves things around it doesn't actually move the screen like you you would expect it to do um, with a right press I think it's going to do other things as well that's going to select it instead so that's interesting you can't sort of throw throw your screen around with your pen in the menu system so that's a quick sort of close-up view of uh, yeah, there's an example actually of whoops that's an example of how you would scroll so where you would normally let's just go back to that because that's an interesting one where you would normally scroll up and down with your finger and get a small bar on the side to show you progress once you um, hover you get you can't move up and down what you're doing is selecting if you click on anything there what you get is a bar on the right Obviously, you're left-handed, so that's not so great for me. So you would scroll using that. So you can't. It's not like your finger. Yeah, you, know, you would use your finger here uh, to scroll up and down and to select. But with the pen, uh, the scrolling only comes on the right-hand side. You obviously got the right click as well. I don't think there's anything here that would uh, would actually register right click. But anyway, yeah, that's it. Good. So that's a sort of close look at the digitizer on the Asus. Uh, Vivo Tab Note 8. It is working really, really well, and because of this little bit here, it is uh, so, so much more useful than devices that have pens that don't have places to put them. My name's Shippy, 
at umcportal.com is where the review is being written right now for the Asus MT80. So check us out there. We've also got some review, uh, some videos up uh, on the YouTube channel. Steve Chippy is the YouTube channel. Thanks for watching this, and see you on the next one.